it's Terry. Welcome to my channel. And today, for our Monday Makers video, which I do on Mondays, we're going to do a Cricut Design Space project. It's called the Wilderness Book. I will have a, uh, well, I can't put a link to it, um, but if you follow the video, I'll show you how to find it inside Cricut Design Space. You will have to have um, the Cricut Access membership to get this or for free, or you will have to buy it separately. But most of the projects, a couple of dollars. I think it's well worth whatever the price is to pay it because there's a lot you can do with these. This is my uh, first sample. And you can see I've, I went in and added some extra background pieces here. This is the inside. I saved this little piece that came out of here and made it, you can make it into a tag. Um, I did make folded over sheets for the inside, just so out of regular white cardstock. They are kind of difficult to get in and out, so I'm not sure that's a good idea. Separate sheets might be better. Um, and then on the back, it has this little pocket, and I did do a cut a slit for this to slide down under, but we're gonna do something very different with that. Um, so that gives you an idea of what it looks like finished. It's about three and a half inches wide by five inches tall. Cricut Design Space open. And the first thing we're going to do is go to Cricut Access, View All, and click on that. And it's going to bring up all the uh, projects that are in Cricut Access. Then we're going to go over to Search Projects and type in Book. And the third one in should pop up as Wilderness Book. And that's what we're going to use today for our project. So click on the Wilderness Book and then click on Customize. And it will load it into the screen. So we want to click on it and it will select everything. And up here where it says Size, or I'm sorry, Position, go to Zero, Zero. Now that puts everything up here in the top corner. So now we can see that this part right here, which is what we're concerned with right now, uh, we want to make this whole thing larger. So we're going to have to um, scroll down. Oh, I hate that they've set it up this way. And um, you want to click on this handle, and we're going to drag to make it larger. And it's going to be a hit or miss the first time. Let's see if I can get this. I can still go a little bit. Nope, 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 can't. So if you'll watch, if you'll watch this right here, you, this doesn't need to be down past 11 and a half. So let's go back to... There, it should be at 11 and a half right there. So that would mean that your size should read 20.224 for the height and 16.043 for the width. And if you come up here and check it, this is now 10 across and this is 11 and a half. So that should work for us. So you go ahead and click off on that. This little piece right here is not attached to everything. So let's drag it up here, and let's make it, um, 250 equally. So for some reason, it's not the same. So click on the lock to unlock it, and then in size, you're going to type in 2.50, hit your tab key, 2.50, hit your enter key. So now it's a exact circle and then let's lock it back and let's drag this off to the side. So now you can click on this whole thing, right click and ungroup it. <clears throat> Excuse me. And these little sheets right here, we're not going to use. You can keep them if you want, but we're not going to be concerned with those right now. And then this sheet I want to drag up here so that I don't have to scroll all over the place to see things. Just organizing a little bit. So that should have this set at the correct size that we want to be at. 
and um, you can cut this out of, uh, oh, once you get to this point, you want to go ahead and click Save, Save As, and then you can let it go ahead and do it, uh, Book 1, or you can give it a different name, whichever you want to do, and save it. And now you can select it all and move it out of the corner if you want. So there we go. So this should be okay. Let's test, test it and see. Yep, everything is showing on one sheet. So we should be fine. Yep. So it looks good. So I'm going to save it again. And you can cut this out of cardstock. Um, I do have an example that I made out of cardstock this morning. So if you have some of that, you could also use a thick, real thick cardstock. You could try to use the craft board, um, whatever material you want. So at this point, all we're going to need to do is cut all these pieces out. And once you get all of your pieces cut out, then um, we'll uh, come back and I'll flip the video down and we'll construct it together. You're going to need a bone folder or something to, to help fold a crease. You're going to need scissors. I mean scissors. Ugh, does that look like scissors to you? I don't think so. Tape and score tape or glue. Now, I'm using score tape. You can use glue if you want. Um, and also, some of these little bitty tiny magnets. They're T90 if you can see that. Let's see if you can see them. They're a little bitty. I got these off of Amazon, and I will put a link to these in the description and in the blog post. You're going to need just two of them. They're very hard to get off. So there's one. You have to kind of slide them. You can't really pick them off. And there's two. And you want to make sure that you keep them where they're stuck together. And I'll, I'll tell you why in, in a little bit. But So, I've folded all my pieces. So we start with the cover. There are two creases and it gets folded here and here so that you have a little bit of a back edge. Um, this piece will be folded like this. And this piece has two creases. One at the edge here and one here. So you'll fold that that way. The inside parts, the same kind of way. This gets folded. It has two fold lines, one here and one here. And this has the crease along the back, two, two folds here. Uh, I'm not going to talk about this yet. This one, these tabs fold inward and then this folds over because it's going to be attached like that. So when this goes on... This is how this fits on. And then these two pieces fold over this way. I don't particularly like this color on top of this background paper. So I'm not going to use this strip and I'm going to cut it off. Let me just do that real quick. go so bye bye on that one the same thing on this flap when you put this in this will be like this and then this will close up this way this flap will be here and these will come around this way and I like this gold on top but I don't particularly care for the white underneath so again I'm going to cut that white off or this little piece right here from the inside section off. And let's get rid of those. Okay, so there's my inside piece now. And um, if you don't cut those pieces off, this is what yours will look like. It will have the two. It shows the stitching a lot. On this paper, the stitching doesn't really show a whole lot. That's something to think about think about when you're picking your papers. Let me get that lined up right. You can see some, but not a lot. It just depends on, I guess, how you're looking at it. 
okay, so remember I said we wanted to use magnets for the closures on this flap right here. So we have this here. This is going to be like this, and this comes over this way. So we're going to want to put a magnet on the underside here and one here, but we're going to put the magnet here underneath and then attach this down. <clears throat> so we can go ahead and do that now. And this also will, will fold under here. And you can, if you do it ahead of time, you can hide it with this piece. And they didn't add a fold on it. I'm not sure why. So I'm going to go ahead and hold that and just flip that up and score it. And then in the center, where is that? I want to come along here and hold this here. And I'm going to put a tiny little um, tick mark right here and right here. So now I know that I want my um, magnet to go about right there. So you can see what I did. And then you can erase these other little tick marks. And our magnet, actually remember, is going to go underneath here. So that gives you a way to just kind of judge. Now you separate your magnets Putting, when you separate them, put the part that was stuck to the second one down on the table. Hold that side up. And I'm going to just kind of gauge where this goes, which is about right here. I'm going to add a little dot of glue. I'm going to set my magnet on there, kind of push it down, and then I'm going to take a piece of tape, oops, and I'm going to place a piece of tape over top of it. That way it's going to hold my magnet and it's not going to come out. Then I'm going to use my score tape. And we're going to run a piece of score tape down this side and down this side. And then we're also going to want to add, yeah, a piece here to hold that flat down. So I'm going to set my little magnet off here to the side, and I'm going to pull up the score tape. Okay, I'm going to fold this flat down. Then I'm going to fold it inside. And now I'm going to take this magnet and I'm going to drop it, whoops, drop it on just like that. Then I'm going to add a little bit of dot of glue to the, whoops, to the top. Then I'm going to fold this, and you kind of have to hold this open, and I'm just going to touch it to that, and then pick this up, and now that gives me an idea where I want to put my glue for my magnet. You can't put more glue on this to hold it. I'm going to slide my magnet off. Add it on there. And now, if you want to, that piece that you cut off, you can cut that down and glue it on there to hold it shut, or you can just use the tape like we did before. 
right now I'm just going to use tape. And I'm going to have to cut this tape. It's too wide. You just want a piece to secure it. There we go. Hold that on there. tape off my hand. Now your magnet should be in the right spot, which it is. Mark that off. And like I said, if you want to, you could cut this down to cover up the magnet like that. So let's say we're going to come through and cut. I don't think I cut very straight that much. I've used a uh, cutter to, whoa, to crimp the edges. I don't know if this is going to work that far down. It's not. <coughs> so I'll need to cut it straight across here. And now that just gives me a little piece to sit on there like that. And I will cut it off where that fold was as well. So it just kind of adds a little bit to the inside of your flap. So I'm going to set that aside for right now. That's all I'm going to need for the glue. Now again, I'm using score tape, but you could use glue if you wanted. The next thing we're going to do is attach the inside. Where'd it go? Oh, there it is. And you're just going to want to run score tape on these two sides. You don't want to cross over where that is, so if it'll help you, you can do it this way. And then over here, you can do this one this way so that you don't cross over that fold line. Okay, let's open our little book back. Let me take off the tape. Whoops. Sticky, sticky. Okay, and very carefully, you want to center this along those edges, top to bottom, left to right. Make sure you've got it straight and attach it down. Next, you're going to add some score tape here on this flap. Then you're going to add score tape on this flap. Pull that off. Pull this off. Then you're going to flop this over. Push down carefully. And there you go. Now you have your little pocket. Next piece would be this piece, which makes a library card. This piece you can fold for either side, however you want it. I'm going to fold it this way. So it's laying flat like this. You want to fold this in, this tab in. You're going to put some score tape right there. Oops, I did mine backwards, sorry. 
Yeah, how'd I do that? Oh, yeah. Okay. Put score tape here. We're going to fold this over. So it's like that. Then you want to fold these both in. Put score tape on them. Oh, I picked up an extra piece there. Whoops, get over there. And then this folds up onto this part. So now you have two little pockets. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to round the edges of these with my little cropper here. Just to make it look a little nicer. And then I'm going to add score tape to the back. I think these would be really cute for Christmas um, for stocking stuffers. You can add an extra one there. You probably don't need that one, but I'm going to do it anyway. I can't believe y'all that, that the dog is being so quiet right now. I'm shocked. Must not be a lot of people outside. Okay, and then this would fit, and be careful you don't cross over this fold line here, which, let me turn this over. When you get that back on, you might have to re-fold that so that they match up with each other. There we go. And now you want to stick, whoops, not upside down. Right like this. And there's our inside all done. So now it'll fold just like that. Cool, huh? <clears throat> and then on the outside, and you can make, cut, just cut little pieces of paper to stick in there. You might find, you could probably find a notepad that would fit inside there. Um, so this goes like this. And on the back, I'm gonna turn it to where, where my flap is here. And that's how I'm going to mount my pocket or on the outside. So this is the shape. You want to fold this part up. The flaps fold in. And you want to put score tape on this side here. Right up next to the edge. Okay. Then this piece, this shape, you want to fold that flap down, turn it over, and you're going to take and put score tape on this part right back here. Oops. And don't attach this before you do this because then it's hard to get it in there and get it straight. Okay. Okay, now I'm going to open this up and I'm going to put this right like this. Is that right? Yeah. And I'm going to attach this right where that fold is. And if you can't see the fold, you might leave it folded like this. Because you want to get that right on the edge of that. And straight. Push it down. 
So that covers the inside. Now you can fold these in and now you can attach this part. Fold these down, fold this up, and there you go. So that makes your little envelope, and this is a flap. Now earlier I said that I cut a slit in this for here. If you don't want to do that, you can attach the magnets again. You could do a ribbon around it. Okay, so I don't have the right kind of ribbon, but I'm going to show you how we do this. I would take the ribbon and first attach it with the score tape to the back, then attach this on top. And then you could be you will be able to pull your ribbon up and tie it closed. So that's how you would do that. I'll have to get me some pretty ribbon to go with this. I don't have anything this color right now. So that would, and if you're not going to use the ribbon, you want to use the magnet, you would go ahead and just add your magnets and then add this to the back. And that's how that would look. So that's all there is to it. That gives you uh, two different versions, two different colors. Um, earlier I had mentioned you could leave this flap up and stick this underneath there if you want. That's another option. I really like the magnets though. So I hope that helps you put this together. Uh, again, I'm going to try to make this much larger so we'll see how that works out and I will add it to the Back post. Cricut Design Space and I'm going to show you how I'm going to change the uh, this book and make it a larger book. I'd like to make it like a 5 by 7 Let me see real quick here what a... Well, a normal little pad is at least 5 by 8 so that might be the best way to go about it. <clears throat> I do have this other little pad and that's what you want to do is measure whatever kind of pad of paper you're going to put inside this. You want to measure the size of it. So mine is actually 5 by 7 little hair over 5 by 7 So we'll see how big, if we can get this to match up. If not, we'll just have to go with whatever size we can get. But what I've done is I've duplicated, you know, I've changed the colors, first of all. But I've duplicated this item, this item and this item. <clears throat> and I've already started changing this one. And I'll show you how I did that. Um, let me duplicate this real quick. And bring it down here. So the first thing I want to do is right click and detach. And then I want to get a shape, which is a square. And I'm going to bring it down here. We're going to cut this long strip off first. Unclick the lock and make it the width so that you wind up cutting evenly across. <clears throat> when you click on this, if you click over in here, you're going to select only the score lines. You don't want to do that. So you want to click to the left of that, or you can just click this shape up in here and not click the score lines. Hold your shift key and then click the black shape as well come down to the bottom right and click slice. So now we can get rid of that. We can get rid of this and we can get rid of this. So we need another shape, another square, and you're going to bring it over to this size and butt it up here. Click the lock and drag it down. And this time you're going to keep that selected, click your shift key, click this object, and click slice in the bottom right corner. Pull this off. We don't need that. We'll keep that. We don't need that. Now you'll notice there's still score marks here and you want to keep the score marks that are in the center. They're still there. They're just underneath this layer. So if you click on these and go down to contour on the very bottom right, you'll see these dots or dashes right here. Those are the ones we want to hide. So you hide them by clicking on them. And that should have hid both of them. And then click the X. And now, now you see they're gone. But you see this rectangle over here because the other ones are still there. So right click on this shape. Click send to back. Now you see your score lines. You want to select score lines and 
the um, shape, right click, attach. So now your score lines are still with your shape. <clears throat> so that's how I got this shape. Now for these long ones up here that I did, we want two of those, you're going to right click, duplicate, move it over here, then you're going to flip it horizontal, then you're going to butt it up next to this one, then you're going to select both of them, click align top, and then at the bottom right, weld. So now we have the one shape. <clears throat> and then you want to duplicate that, right click duplicate, and we're going to make it the opposite color, so you want to change the color on it to whatever color you want. So that's how I got that shape up there. And actually down here, I'm going to get rid of that one and keep this one because I did it better. And then we'll get rid of these because I don't need them. So that's how you get the shape. And we're taking these off so that we can resize it larger because with all those long tabs, it wouldn't size much larger than what I had it in the first place or what it was designed at. <clears throat> and this is going to be our side closure, but it's going to wrap from the back to the front. So then we have this part, and we want to do the same thing with it. We want to get rid of this and get rid of that. So let's do a shape. And we're going to come over here and take that off. And I actually think I'm going to take this part off too. So click your lock, bring it across all of that. Oh, I forgot a step. Click this, right click, detach. So now we, sh we should be fairly good here. So click your black square, hold your shift key, and click on this tab over here. Now you'll look over to the right here. You see you've got the basic shape in this square. Come down to slice. So now we can get rid of that. We can get rid of that. We can get rid of that. <clears throat> we go to our score lines and go to contour. And let's see, we want to click off this. We want to click off this one. And we want to click off this one. And this one. And these two while we're at it. So let's see, that should be it. Yes, they're all gone except for what's in the middle here. So we need another shape, another square. And we're going to come over here and butt that up very carefully. Click the lock, drag it down, hold, keep it selected, hold your shift key, select the other shape, and do slice. Now we can get rid of that, get rid of that, and get rid of that. Then we want to right click, send back. Then select both, right click, attach. <clears throat> so now we have our two shapes, our outside cover and our inside cover. There we go. And we have our uh, inside pocket. So let's squish these over close to each other. And let's select them all. And I want to move this so that it's right on a line so I can judge um, how wide and how tall it is. So let's say, uh, let's put it at, if you use your position, X is going to be 0. Click the tab. And 14 will be the other one. So now we know we're, we're on the edge here and we're at 14. So well, I'm going to try to make this as far out as I could go, which is 11 and a half. So you want to direct, click on this little um, selection button, and we're going to hold it, hold your mouse down, and drag, and let's go over to, I think that's uh, 11 and a half should be about right there. 
Okay, so let's see what we have now. Let's click this one, and we've got almost at 11 and a half and 8 and 144. Four, four. So we can cut that on the mat. So let's select it all again, and let's go out just a little bit more. And let's see what we've got now. Oops, I'm too big. If you go over 11 and a half, it's not going to cut. It's going to try to put it on a separate mat. So let's go back in just a titch. 11.49, close enough. So that's what you want to get. 11.49, 11.50. Just make sure that you're sizing all of this at the same time or it's not going to work. So see, this will still fit up there. Because we sized it all together, it fits perfectly. And this will fit perfectly because, oops, let's move this to the front. It was sized at the same time. So now you know your pocket's going to go in there. Okay. Now on this piece, I want to right click, detach, and I want to get another shape, a square, but I'm going to change my square and make it a little, whoops, what happened here? There it is. I want to make it just a little, like a little cutout slit area. And we want it to go from about right here Let's say down just a little bit, and about right there maybe. Let's go a little bit shorter. Let's go 490 at the top. Um, if you can't get it right, you can come up here and do 4.90. So there we go. And we want to make it a switch smaller. There we go. We want to kind of line that up so it's pretty much even on the left and right sides. We're going to lock that. This we have to go right click. I already detached it, didn't I? Okay. So we want to hold, click this, hold your tab or your shift key, I'm sorry, and click on the notebook part. Now you've got your basic shape and we want to do slice. So let's right click on this shape, send it back. Here we've got this piece we want to get rid of. We've got this piece. We're going to get rid of that. So now we have this little slit. That is going to be where you will slide your notepad into the um, paper. So we want to select these, right click, attach. So that's all the changes that we're going to make to it. Okay, so um, I've cut all my pieces out. This is for the alternate version that's larger. So you can see it's quite a bit larger than the other one. Where did I put that? Oh, I've lost my mind. So you see there's quite a bit of difference in the size. It's, it's really quite a bit bigger. Um, <clears throat> so once I got this cut out, I started thinking that I really wanted to have the covers be sturdier. And there's also the issue of what's showing through these little pieces that doesn't show up very well. So I took this piece in Design Space, and then just on either side of where the score marks were, I cut it in half. So I'm going to apply these first and then put this over top. So I'll go ahead and do that now. So here's the pocket. I did it in exactly the same way. The only thing I did do is I rounded the corners up here at top. So this needs to go you know what? This has to go onto here first. It has to go onto the back of here. So, and it's exactly the same size. So there's that. So now it will go like this. So let's add the other one. Okay. So this one will fit right on top here. Just, whoops, just like that. Okay, now we can attach this here. And I'm going to add the score tape just like I did before, and one here. This will also give a little bit extra strength when you add your um, notepad into it.
Whoops. Come on. Sometimes that tape just doesn't want to come off, does it? <clears throat> Whoops. Okay. This has no right or wrong. Yeah, no, it doesn't. So now we're going to glue this on just or attach it just like we did previously with the little ones. Center it. And there we go. Now our covers are going to be good and strong. So now we have to find those creased lines. And you want to fold on those. I'm wondering if this might not be easier to do. There we go. So there's the first one. And I'm going to score that. See, now you can see the blue shining through. And on this side, you got to find where those are. It's really hard to see this line on here. Let's just do this. I can kind of judge where it's supposed to go. Whoops. Ah, there it goes. Found it. I think that's right. Yeah. Okay, so now we've got it where it folds nice. Now see, you can see the blue shining through the, or peeking through the little slits. All right, and this is a slit that I cut this time so that your, um, your uh, pad can go through there. And I'll mess with it later, but you get the idea. I'll have to use a different pad, but that's how your pad can go inside. So I'm going to leave this in here for right now so that it'll give me kind of a padding. I guess we can go ahead and put the pocket on now. We'll do that. So don't mess up like I did and put that score tape in the center. Just stick to the outsides. And I used the same, um, the strap, and just made it wider and made a little bookmark. I just cut two pieces and taped them together. So now we have a little bookmark. <clears throat> okay, we'll leave that in there. Now for the strap. Just shoot for the middle and attach it just like that so now it's attached to your back and then the front I think I'm gonna take this and make a bend there and then make another bend a little ways away up so now I've got that flat part yeah that works good so bend it a crease here and bend a crease here. I'm thinking Velcro dot would be the best thing. And I don't have any here. 
but that's the best thing that I came up with is a Velcro dot. So attach your back with your score tape, make your folds, and then use your Velcro dots here and here, and that'll work really well. So there you go. Now you have a full-size notebook. Cool. Um, if you want to use one of these in, I wrapped paper that coordinated on the inside over here and around the edge and on the back. So now it matches. That's an idea. And again, here are the smaller ones. Now this one I did use the magnet on and it stays closed just fine. Um, that's what it looks like. I don't have the back attached because I wanted to do ribbon to keep this closed, but I think I'm going to use the, um, the same thing with here, the Velcro dot. So I'm going to go ahead and attach this to the back. I'll have to, ah, come on. It's being tricky. I'll have to get some of those Monday when I run out. And I'll add a picture of it, how I did the Velcro dots to the back or to the post. The front back. I want it this way. And then that just gets centered right like that. And there you go. So there's the other one and um, on this one again, if you used uh, just regular paper, then you'd be able to fold these over. But since I didn't, and I used cardstock, I'm just going to slide them in there. They're a little tricky to get in an inside because of the flaps. There we go. Oh, lost my little bookmarky or tag. So there you go. There's uh, those, and this one has the uh, different colored cardstock on the front and the slit in the back for the envelope. So that gives you um, several choices. So there you go. There's the three different versions. Hope you enjoy the video and that you give this project a try. Again, if you have to pay for it, I think it's well worth it <coughs> because you can do a lot with it. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Be safe. Be kind. See you next time.